This county town became the new home for the midwife toad. But as a non-native species, they're not entitled to protection, and their colonisation of Bedford has been followed by a trail of destruction. It's thought that the toads first came to the UK in a shipment of aquatic plants from France and arrived here at a nursery, but it's long since been redeveloped. In 1908, two little boys, Robert and Percy Brocklehurst, took some of the nursery toads and successfully established another colony until a house was demolished to make way for this office block. Midwife toads aren't good travellers and Bedford's brick back garden walls kept them isolated. Today, many of the sites where they've settled are under threat due to neglect or redevelopment. It's thought the main way they've colonised the country is people deliberately moving toads to new ponds, which is how they may have arrived in neighbouring Bidenham. I mean, amphibians are sort of quite well known for producing hundreds or thousands of eggs. Just leaving them in yeah. the camp. Yeah, uh, and they're sort of... Uh strategy for parental care is if you produce enough of them some of them will survive yeah. midwives are quite unusual because they produce fewer eggs but weirdly um they don't just dump them in a pond they carry them around with them uh, it's actually the male that carries the eggs which is doubly unusual if you like because in most yes. animals it's the females that do most of the parental care and i think uh, when the first ones were seen carrying eggs they just assumed it was the females carrying the eggs Absolutely. so it had the name midwife Whoa -ho. we got one yeah so this is a, a last year's sort of froglets. And he's now getting to the point where he's starting to reabsorb his tail and he'll be leaving the water in that's a couple of weeks huge. from now. Because a little froglet would be about yeah, yeah. that big uh, with a bit of tail, wouldn't it? Uh, and that's simply because he spent longer in the pond growing to get to this size. Fabulous. Oh, well spotted. That's brilliant. As far as we know, midwife toads don't threaten our native wildlife, so should we now be protecting them? And there comes a point when something like a midwife toad becomes part of the local culture in Bedford, for example, and at what point you say, well, actually, we should be saving these because they're part of Bedford. I don't know the answer, but I can understand why people would want to protect them. Unlike their tadpoles and toadlets, adult midwife toads don't like water and live in dry burrows. So I'm not going to find one in the pond. Instead, I'm enlisting the help of Bedfordshire's reptile and amphibian recorder, Helen Muir Howie. How hard are they to find? Very difficult. You have to actually search for them. Now, what we're listening for is a sort of electronic, sort of beeping sound. It sounds like a barcode reader it's at the checkout, does. doesn't yes, it? it does. Beep, yes, beep. Yes. Is it just a sort of, I'm here, come mate with me call? That is part of it, but they do call out because they, they want to keep the colony together. They know where it is. They know where it is somewhere. Yeah, they're coming out. Oh, oh, he's got eggs. Oh, good. He has. Good. Oh, brilliant. Look at this. And he's a big one as well. That's exactly what we were looking for tonight. He's got quite a good clutch of eggs there. He has, it's a yes. Good number, isn't yes. it? Yes. How many can they, can they have? Up to about 20. And how long will he hold those for? You're probably looking at a couple of weeks. People have tried to incubate the eggs away from the male and they don't hatch. It's really? So what does he do that's so special? I think he's able to control the temperature and humidity by going in and out of his burrow. He can keep them at the right, in the right conditions. Midwife toads are not like our native amphibians. Their atmospheric beeps and the care the males give to their small clutch of eggs are extraordinary. But is that enough of a reason to protect an alien species? I don't know. What I do know is that after an evening of hunting and wrangling toads, they are absolutely fascinating and I'm very, very fond of them.